the streamer who faked his death twice. This is Neon, if you guys don't know who he From is. From faking um... his death multiple times, to dating an OnlyFans girl despite making fun of them, to threatening to do something unspeakable to a minor, Neon has proven himself to be willing to do anything for Cloud, even if he puts his own life at risk. Or pretends to, anyway. Neon started his online career when he was just 12 years old, with the oldest remaining video on his channel being an NBA 2K gameplay video from 2016. His early content didn't get much traction, as he only managed to get a little under 200 subs by June of 2017. There are a lot of reasons why Behind this. The oversaturation of 2K gameplay by bigger creators, yeah. the dwindling popularity no of the game itself, and the quality of his content. Regardless of these obstacles, he continued to put effort into his channel, eventually adding a face cam to his videos as uploads became more frequent. After 2K18 came out to mixed reactions, Neon decided it was time to change his content for different games. It was only when he started playing Fortnite that he saw a notable <laughs> spike in views and got to 2,000 subs. This got a lot more eyes in his 2K content, which Neon started heavily clickbaiting by claiming to be the son of Ronnie 2K. K, the game's media manager. This worked not only because they were both Indian, but also due to 2K's player base having a bit of a love-hate relationship with the man himself. Eventually, though, the real Ronnie2k caught wind of this and cleared up the rumors, saying he had no children and didn't know who Neon was. It must hurt to be disowned by your own father over Twitter. Regardless, Ronnie2k had an adverse effect, bringing even more attention to Neon's videos. By late 2019, Neon was streaming on Twitch and averaging thousands of views per video. After he got the most he could out of his 2k gameplays and squeaker rage compilations, he decided to abandon the game altogether and focus exclusively on making Fortnite videos. He had already learned how to effectively get people's attention from his time claiming to be Ronnie's son. So his channel started blowing up with other videos like My cousin made me get surgery after stream sniping me I got arrested And cops break into my house live on stream Of course, these were heavily played up and not exactly real But then again, Neon Yo, was the Yo, era, the era of clickbait The era of clickbait Yo This guy was a little gremlin in the beginning, man Already learned how to effectively get people's attention from his time claiming to be Ronnie's son. So his channel started blowing up with other videos like My cousin made me get surgery after stream sniping me, I got arrested, and cops break into my house live on stream. Of course, these were heavily played up and not exactly real. But then again, Neon was making videos for little kids who didn't really care at all. They were being clickbaited into watching them, so it didn't True. matter. One of the best videos of this was a video titled You Guys Will Not Be Seeing Neon Anymore, in which he announces he's running away from home because his parents took away his PlayStation and and we're planning to send him to a mental hospital after he punched a hole in a wall during one of his Fortnite rages. I raged, bro. I raged. I punched a hole in my wall. And you know, my parents weren't having it, bro. I punched a hole in my wall, and my parents were not having it. So they said, they said, yo, you know what? You know what? They took my PS4, they unplugged my PS4, and they said, you know what? I'm sending you to a mental hospital. This may sound like a really what? dumb thing to do, but this video currently sits at nearly 3 million views, so it definitely worked. And it was so successful, he turned it into a whole series where each entry was an update into his real life. His next uploads covered him breaking into his neighbor's house to make a Fortnite video, getting caught and arrested, and his time in jail before he was bailed out. After getting 4 Bro. million views over 4 uploads of him playing out these little stories, it was very clear what the path moving forward was. The more outrageous and obviously fake the video was, the better it performed. Soon after, he made an upload titled I'm Sorry, in which he announced he was getting deported to his home country. In the follow-up, yep. he actually recorded himself on an airplane supposedly headed for Pakistan. Obviously, this didn't prove he was being deported, but it did add a layer of reality to the storyline that kept his fans very engaged. Eventually, he returned to the United States, at which point he came up with a new storyline. And him pushing the line with this story is where his first major controversy came from. In 2019, a video was uploaded titled Neon is Dying, featuring a poorly photoshopped image of him in a hospital. In it, blurbs of text pop popped up on screen that supposedly came from his brother, attesting to his critical condition and having multiple seizures every day. The same day this was uploaded, he promoted his second channel, where he had just uploaded a new video. A bit later, his death was announced, and of course, the oh reveal that he was God. alive came right after. Anyone with a pulse already knew what was going on at this point, and the viewers either didn't care because his content entertained them, or they never even watched him in the first place because they weren't 10 years old. While no one really cared that he was lying to get views, given how obviously clickbaity the videos were, Bro, like, how how does someone, like, uh, okay, uh, actually, I know how. Obviously, it's for the views and whatnot, but, like, it's the same thing with a person that, like, faked faked his, his girlfriend dying and then, and then turning it into content, bringing up the, like, we're gonna, today, in today's video, we're gonna be using a Ouija board to contact my dead ex-girlfriend. Like, Shit like that is crazy, man. How how do people think it's okay to upload stuff like that? 
Yeah, J People Station. People did take some offense <laughs> to him pretending he was sick or about to die. At the time, there were a lot of reaction videos and Reddit posts lambasting him for faking his death. And while it was the first time he got a significant amount of backlash, it was far from the last. Because within two days of the WHO officially declaring the pandemic in March of 2020, Neon uploaded a video titled, Meeting a Man with Coronavirus. I gotta give it to the guy on the call. He gave the performance of a lifetime here. Why is your mic so trash, bro? They got you using such a trash mic in that hospital, bro. Why yeah, is the mic... They gave me, they gave me the trash mic on the oh hospital. My right God. Now. I'm on the oh. bed. They didn't want no... <laughs> As it turns out, this person talking to Neon was a fellow YouTuber named AKA Seekbot, who frequently live streamed oh, with Neon God. during this time. Seeing how the negative reaction to faking his death had boosted his popularity, Neon started shamelessly rage baiting for attention. And the most interesting part is that it continued to work despite how little he tried to hide it. Partly, this is also because of how genuinely rage annoying baits. he comes off in every video he posts. Like he's purposely playing a stereotypically obnoxious Gen Alpha kid that no one can really resist hating on. Eventually, he did take down the pandemic related videos and attempted an apology. Apology, although I doubt it was due to actual remorse. More likely, no, he was no, trying to get people to calm back down so he could set up his next stunt. A few months later, Neon's Twitch streams were getting a lot of traction, averaging thousands of viewers every stream. He managed to keep it up till the end of the year, at which point he mysteriously stopped posting for unknown reasons. But he would make a major comeback in June of 2023 and immediately set the tone for the kind of online presence he was aiming for. I want a black haircut. Like, what's like, what's like a good haircut, bro? What's a black haircut? Typical like hood rat, drug dealer haircut. Listen, Haji, don't give. Up in here. What the f them black hair cut? Wait, sh it's a fake chains on her. This time, he was not going to lean on gaming videos for content. Instead, Bro, he took how up IRL dis streaming, where he was a general nuisance to random people on the street. One connection he had from the old gaming days that really came in handy for promoting his comeback was his friendship with the infamous streamer Aiden Ross. Because of the momentum he accumulated with this comeback, and potentially some direct intervention from the platforms he was on, Neon was catapulted into insane amounts of popularity. He went on Aiden's stream all the time, yeah, most notably yeah. the one where he spoke directly to Andrew Tate. The point is, Aiden said he was I am? No, I don't. I'm sorry. You're telling me a girl anymore. your bald ass over me. Is that Yo. SpongeBob on your t-shirt? Yeah. Oh my god. Right, Why am I talking to these children? Oh, I gotta take my phone. You got to okay, you take, your, you take your inhaler, G. That'll turn the girls on. The gimmick was pretty simple. He acted arrogant Rage and insulted others while looking ridiculous to purposely set himself up for a comeback. But as simple as this strategy was, it was very effective. The only problem is that he never turned off the character. Over the next few months, he continued streaming, and his followers slowly realized that whether it was a character or not, he was just behaving like this full time. And in early August, he got his first meaningful backlash as a video was posted of Neon getting jumped and robbed. I can't show- yeah, this, is, this is like a- a, a problem with a lot uh, that a lot of like IRL streamers have nowadays is that it's all it's all centered around attention and and how crazy they can like teeter on the line of right and wrong to farm the controversy right so it's like you're an IRL streamer just you know doing IRL stuff with your friends or anything that's that's not enough that's not enough you need to like make some uh mentally ill person jump into a lake and then sit here and say you'll give them like twenty dollars and then you know almost almost cause serious damage but you know as long as the camera's rolling and you get it on your live stream it's good content it's good content as long as the cameras are rolling and and it's just it we live in a terrible terrible day and age for irl live streaming I think it all started with, like, Ice Poseidon. Who who popularized IRL streaming? IRL streaming. I'm pretty sure it was Ice Poseidon, right? Yes. The constant, like, uh, like food deliveries, uh, leaking where he's staying, where he's at, what he's doing. Having people, like, run up to him. People that hate him, all kinds of stuff. It, it's like, I I don't know. I I think I think it, it definitely was. Oh, it was Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go with Ice Poseidon. I I don't remember those days, but. But here, unfortunately, thanks to YouTube. In the video itself, we see a few perpetrators wearing masks, threatening and humiliating Neon, and stealing Wasn't his belongings. Fake? The ridicule he got from this clip pushed him to announce his retirement from streaming. 
This past week has been the worst week of my life. I, don't I know thought what this was happened. fake. I don't know why I didn't deserve any of this, but it's been terrible. I'm a joke. But your character is the reason why people are doing this. Even though I'm oh, like 90 plus percent sure that video was fake. Um, it's the character that you're trying to portray yourself as is the reason why things like this would happen. I am a disgrace to my community. I'm a disgrace to my race. I'm a disgrace to my religion. I'm a disgrace. I'm a fucking joke. I'm a joke. I'm a damn joke. I don't know what to do anymore. I've been doing YouTube for five years and I've never once felt this way in my entire life to where I just never want to He doesn't feel this way, by the way. Never uh, surprise, shocker. And while the video initially looked pretty genuine, eventually people started guessing it was all a publicity stunt, something he later admitted to. You getting jumped real. Yeah. No. It's true. Yo! And despite previously insulting him at their first meeting, Andrew Tate actually offered me. to help train him to deal with this kind of situation, which once again boosted his popularity. So Neon accepted the offer and they started speaking over DMs, but it appears Tate himself stopped responding to his messages, which made Neon feel like he had to prove himself, resulting in this very wonderful clip. Uh, chat, me and Tate DM'd a little bit, but then I, I, I think he stopped taking me serious and he stopped responding. So, Tate, this is for you right here, Tate. I'm shaving my head. So you can understand how serious I am about this, right? I really want to change my life around, bro. I want to be a new man, okay? So I'm going to shave my head. And hopefully oh, that do that. I want to be, you know, I want to be, I want to be a good guy, okay? At this point Bro, in time, your Andrew hair Tate will grow probably back. the most famous person in the world. So engaging with him publicly sent Neon's popularity through the roof. To make it even more of a perfect storm, around the same time, former YouTube prankster Fusi was lighting a flame under his dying career with his streams on kick. It's no secret that Fusi is a bit more erratic than the average person, so yeah. pairing him with Neon was sure to be a dumpster fire. The first two met when Fusi pressed Neon over comments he supposedly made. If you touch me, don't do- yeah, problem? Stand up. I'm taller than you. Look me in the eyes. Say what, say everything you said on the internet right now. Say sorry. Bro, you, you just know when something is like going for a, a clip farm, bro. It, it's, uh, bro. And, and, and people eat this up. People eat it up like, like goddamn candy, bro. Say sorry, G7 president. This kind of exchange between them was a recipe for virality, with Fusi playing the role of a bully and Neon playing the role of an arrogant weakling. The two collided again just a few days later. And although Fusi was notably calmer earlier on, he explained why. He was on the verge of signing a massive contract with Kick and didn't want to mess it up. He also claimed that he hadn't slept in almost two days, which is a known side effect of having a manic episode, something Fusi has had a fair yeah, share of in yeah, the past. A lot but of Fusi's level-headed demeanor quickly changed, and he began lecturing Neon about his behavior, noting that one day he would get what's coming to him. You say behind your computer, your keyboard, where you feel safe, you're gonna get your ass. The real one comes up to you. Still waiting for the day. After that, wow. Pussy told Neon Bro. to get out of his house and repeated one of Mike Tyson's most famous threats that he would go gorilla mode on him until Neon loved him. He also called Neon a slur almost in the same sentence. So I'm not sure where he gets off on making that kind of threat, but then again, he's at least felt like it before. For a long time, I looked at myself in the mirror and I based myself based on what I read on the comments. I felt worthless. I felt ugly. I felt gay. I felt that no, uh, that, like. That. While I'd like to say this was one of Fusi's most days in history, it's really just one piece added to a gigantic list that's nearly impossibly long. Other highlights from this day include Fusi Yo, this, throwing this whole era, this, this face, whole era, out of a this whole era of like the, these content farming, uh, like bullshit with with the IRLs and all this, like Jack Doherty. Neon, Fousey Tube, bro, get, like, we, we need, like, a, a new wave of, like, IRL streamers that take it serious instead of sitting here trying to farm, uh, contra like, controversy clips, dude. Controversial clips for... House, and then lying to the police for no real reason that I can figure out. <laughs> Send the f***ing cops. Like he swats himself, bro. Send the cops. I don't think this was for like a clip farm. I think it was just like. There's a gun to my head right now. There's a gun to my head. Help, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, he left. Ma'am, he left. There's a gun to my head. Help, help, get them. I, I think he just needs help. What's my room number? Help, tell me. 2027. This ultimately resulted in Fusi getting arrested live on stream and yeah. they opted to rescind their $80 million contract offer, if that was even a real offer in the first place. But the kick deal never went through. Chat, um, 
Fousey lost his deal, bro. While Neon didn't have that much to do with Fousey's meltdown, he was a prominent figure the in one of the Island biggest boys. online dramas of that year. It might not have been for the best, though, as Neon likely had no clue what internet fame had in store for him. Later that month, Neon met up with fellow kick streamer Your Rage. Despite expressing concern that Rage didn't like him, yes. Neon made no effort to win him over, calling him a cri- But I don't think it was on purpose. I don't, like... I, I will never know if it was on purpose or not. Like, it had to have just been a manic episode or something of the nature. It's just, you know, he's not, he's not, he needs help, bro. And I said this on the last video. He needs help, dude. He needs a solid team that like stays uh, like on on a on a track that helps him along. But this isn't about Fuzzy Tube, but this is about Neon. Okay, there's no helping Neon. There's no helping Neon. It came out that he was like botting his streams with I, I, like eighty percent of his stream numbers were botted views. Uh, it's just he'll do anything. He'll do anything. He, he fakes his own death, right? Like crippled due to him being in a wheelchair and offering him adult diapers in case he had an accident. These remarks in and of themselves didn't push Rage over the edge. It was only when Neon asked him about his country of origin that things came to a head. Rage said that he was Haitian, which Neon intentionally misunderstood, so he asked him if he was Asian. When Rage clarified, Neon proceeded to mock Haiti. Haitian. Haitian. What is that? Haiti? Haitian, Haiti. It's an island. Why are you making that face? Place where there's no water, Haiti? Why are you making that face? You good? I'm good. Like, bro. Right, right, like, hey, my SpongeBob shirt. Dude, hey, chill, 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 bye, bye. Bye, bye. Much like his conflict with Fusi. Like, like, oh, who, who actively wants to be around him, dude? Like, he's so disrespectful. So disrespectful. I'm surprised he even has people that are willing to show up and and be on his streams, man, or, or like be around him. Their confrontations never escalated and were clearly being played up for the sake of videos, but the same cannot be said for his next feud. Around this time, Neon did the naughty bop on his live stream. For those who don't know, the bop is a dance done to disparage the death of Ethan Reyes, aka Naughty no, Osama, know. a 14 year old who was stabbed by a 15 year old rapper he had beef with. Naughty's older brother, Didi Osama, responded to Neon's disrespect saying, he's a dork, I'm not even about to respond to him, never heard of him. Eventually, Didi Osama actually confronted Neon about this during one of his streams. But, bro, what? For doing a dance? Oh, people think, people take stuff too far, bro. Like, is it, I don't know, I don't know. I don't want to speak on the matter. I don't know if it's too far or not. I think, I think this guy was relatively, like, relaxed and calm about it. He just wanted an apology. I know what you mean, bro. Yeah, bro. yeah I, I know, I want to see. Listen, listen, I just want to tell you this, baby boy, like, you, like, you don't know where I come from. Like, yeah. you, you not from the streets, baby boy. Like, you, you's really, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. baby boy. Damn. You was really a nerd, baby boy. You was really a nerd, baby boy. You can sort of tell that this instance is a lot different than Neon's WWE-like exchanges with Rage and Fousey, where they probably agreed beforehand to what degree they'd be hitting him, whether it be putting him in a headlock or slapping him. Instead, DD assures everyone around them that he won't touch Neon or do anything to him, taking it a lot more seriously. And for a brief period after this, things seemed pretty okay. They even set up a $10,000 bet on a basketball game for the next day. But Neon continued to stoke the flames of the controversy, doing a live stream with the creator of the Naughty Bop song in May of 2024. Yo, okay, so he do, he does this on purpose. Never mind, I take back what I said before. I take back what I said before about it being too far, dude. No, 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 I take it back, I take it back. He deserves getting checked in every way, shape, and form, bro. One of them allowed Neon to wear one of his chains, which he proceeded to accidentally break. I got <gasps> I just broke his chain. When they figured out that this had happened, they ditched him and refused to respond to his phone calls. So, on top of having undone the truce he brokered with Didi Osama, the Naughty Bob creators weren't happy with him either, meaning he came out of the situation with everyone hating him in the worst way possible. Another one of his controversies came from him attending a party with a bunch of TikTok influencers, one of which being Charlie D'Amelio, oh, who God. at one point was the most followed creator on the platform. When Neon noticed her, he approached her and asked her if she was single, while her boyfriend was standing right next to her. Embarrassed by the situation, he walked away and 
shame, but he wasn't done attempting to court women at the party. He found a second girl to try to win over, only for her to be pulled away by one of her friends in the process. He then approached the whole group, trying to get the girl's number. Her friends made a wall in front of her and started getting all over Neon, and this was the result. Bro, these kids are weird. I don't know who these are. I don't know who these are. Search me up. Don't search me up. Search me up. Search me up. Right. Right. He walked away from the group, telling them to search his name. Yeah, uh, Jack Doherty clone? Party, the person who put it all on confronted him as well. As soon as he saw that the boys from earlier had come outside as well and were much more aggressive than before, he backed off and profusely apologized, claiming it was all trolling. That is, until just a few moments later when he asked the security guard for permission to continue insulting them. Much to his audience's surprise, despite how miserably he failed in every single one of his attempts here, he eventually did succeed in rizzing someone. Sam Frank, a TikToker and OnlyFans model, oh. first met Neon at a house party thrown by Jack Doherty, who also happened to be her ex- Not the Doherty house, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Ex-boyfriend. While most of the girls at the party kept their distance from Neon for understandable reasons, Sam no, stuck so. close to him for the majority of the stream. The two eventually exchanged numbers and started dating, prompting many to become suspicious of her intentions since, well, a lot of them suspected he wasn't the kind of guy to pull girls. 2 a.m. me and her just started talking. No, and GG. After that, it's just like everything changed. Oh, are you guys still together? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so cute. Since Neon's community was composed mainly of young men, it would make sense for Sam to date him to effectively promote her content to them. True. And that was one of the main theories about their relationship. And in and, and my opinion, I don't believe that's wrong. I don't believe it's wrong in, in his case specifically. It's uh, it's a little hypocritical because uh, I don't agree with it in multiple other cases. But like in this in this case... Bro, he he piggybacks off of everyone else. Why why would it be wrong for someone to piggyback off him? Last but not least, Neon was supposedly a virgin and had never had a girlfriend before. So many saw him as somewhat of an easy target. And once the narrative that she was using him for clout took off, they that actively makes started feeding into it. A great example of this was the lie detector test. Basically, they asked Sam a handful of questions relating to her loyalty to Neon. And to put it bluntly, she uh <laughs> she she was yeah, not sneak super loyal. Sneak they also asked L, her bro. if she would still date him if he didn't have clout. And just like the previous question, her response was very much doubted by the lie detector. Most devastating of all, knowing that they hadn't done the deed yet, Neon asked Sam if she had had sex in the last three weeks, and her answer of no came back false. Have you been <laughs> in the last three weeks? No. Yeah. Whoa! I'm actually- yo, Get this off yo. me now! I'm done! Yeah. No, I'm actually yeah. done! Get no, off me! I haven't had sex with anyone! I'm literally celibate! I fucking hate this thing! Get me- no, no. Get off me now! Now, lie detector tests are far from 100% accurate, and that's if they were actually even doing a real one and not just having a guy look at a computer screen while pretending he was seeing something. True, Still, true. this served as confirmation to the audience They're that Sam guilty. had been off of Neon. Many content creators who interacted with Sam during this time pressed her on the issue, suggesting that her being with Neon was using him. Most notable was Aiden Ross, whose friendship with Neon was already very much on thin ice. When he spoke about it, he mainly focused on complaining that Neon had been squandering the opportunities being offered to him to instead keep giving time and attention to Sam. To try and get Neon to hear him out, he called him during a stream. But if they're making it very known that they're on the, they're on the internet and in a real serious relationship and she's going out flying people out and fucking them, I have an issue with that. That's my boy. I'm not going to let him go, for, go through that. I don't think he's your boy anymore. Like your first girl. Whether you're 16, you're 15, you're 20, you're 19, you have your first girl, you love her, and you don't see anything else. But when you're there not taking calls from your boys, when you're over there choosing her over, I got I got to do what I got to do, bro. You gotta do, I gotta do what I gotta do. People can look at this as- It makes sense. Uh, you know, he's loyal. He's Aiden loyal. also alleged that Sam had friend. on Neon with some guy she flew out. And according to Neon, the story is true, but they simply slept in the same bed. They never did anything, which is the most real story ever. But the real thing to keep in mind here is that Neon probably doesn't even care. He's blatantly rage-baiting viewers, saying things he knows are ridiculous to get them riled up and comments on how dumb he is. He's an attention whore. obviously cheating on him. All of this culminated he loves with Aiden it. Ross unfollowing Neon, and Neon partly admitting that the relationship relationship was fake, but he did claim that he eventually developed real feelings for her. It's hard to tell to what degree they're completely faking it, but it was clear that the basis of their relationship was clout farming, as they broke up every other video for the sake of clips and clickbait, quickly followed by them getting back together. Eventually, other content creators slowly warmed up to Neon again, although they remained suspicious of Sam, believing her to be nothing but trouble. Then again, Neon has proved time and time again that he doesn't need anyone to inspire him to get into trouble. Neon's next order of business yeah, is to pile up even more controversy by saying the N-word. There's a wide variety variety of clips revolving around him potentially saying it and i can't yo, really yo, show you yo, yo yo bro uploaded it himself it's proved time and time again that he doesn't need anyone to inspire him to get into trouble neon's next order of business was to rile up even more controversy Wait. by saying the n-word there's a wide variety he uploads it himself bro 
The ego on this guy, bro. Bro, then he clipped it and shipped it himself, bro. So you know it was intentional, man. You know it was intentional. If he's up here uploading it himself, bro. Variety of clips revolving around him potentially saying it, and I can't really show you most of them for obvious reasons. What I can show you, however, is Neon facing the consequences of his usage of the forbidden script. First, he got confronted by Aiden Ross's security guard after threatening to say it on stream. Oh! Oh my God! Okay, this is clearly fake. Oh my God! Like, like, bro, but given he, he was walking away smiling, okay? Dude, this was one million percent a farm, bro. Look at this, uh, watch him. Look, look, watch him smile, bro. Look at this smile, dude. He was clearly farming the clip. But given how the guy walks away laughing, it's pretty okay, certain yeah. this was just a bit. It was never was really intended it. to hurt Neon. Then there was another instance of him threatening to do it. But again, it was in a joking context and no one really took it seriously. But the one notorious time in which he actually said it was him announcing that Indians, him included, were qualified for its usage. Two, now. One. Indians are... And, and it was people are praising him support from his peers with him officially having the pass neon's next move was to roll up to none other than the united states president donald trump oh in 2023 God. neon purchased tickets to attend ufc 296 with sneeko knowing that the event would be attended by trump whom neon said he would harass in some unspecific way he claimed to not be worried about the secret service as they had no authority over him although it's important to mention that this statement was made just months before he entered a gun range and filmed himself holding a rocket launcher now while he never made any credible threat against Trump or the Secret Service, this was sufficient Yo. enough that the owner of the UFC, Dana White, decided to preemptively ban Neon from his event. Well, they said Neon is not allowed in. In the stadium? Yes. What? Dana actually spoke about the incident during one of his conferences. Bro, yeah. you know it's sad when you are on a not allow list and, and Dana personally says you're not welcome, bro. That's insane. Like, if you're gonna do something, especially like this, just do it whenever you're there. Don't sit here and tell the live stream that you're going to be here at this time to do this specific reason, right? Why? Uh, why? Why? That he was a banned from the arena tonight, specifically by- He by said he was banned from the arena? No, what happened is he, he said some stupid sh on Instagram. While Neon eventually brushed this off and hinted that he'd try to attend the event anyway, he eventually did apologize for his conduct. I want to sincerely apologize. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't mean, mean any apology, said, bro. And um, it should have never come out of my mouth in the first place, and I, I take ownership. But this is one of the few instances of Neon apologizing that wasn't immediately followed by him doing the exact same thing he just apologized yeah, for. Yeah, but it still so doesn't. I guess that does count for something. Interestingly, he explains that whenever the camera goes on, he blacks out, which I hope is just him trying to come up with an excuse for his behavior and not his sincere interpretation of what goes into making Yo. content. You definitely can get lost in character and screw yourself up psychologically. Yeah, but you, you can no create the character. Yourself from the bit that you're doing, which in spite of all the things he's done, I really hope is not the case. In late December 2023, Neon made a very alarming post, updating his community on his physical health. You guys want to update? I'm gonna give you guys an update. I am sick as sh I've been waking up sick every day the past three, four weeks, but there's just some days where I can't push through it. I have a fever. I know the reason too. It's because my shots, because my stomach disease. There's literally absolutely nothing I can do. I have to take shots every week. There's no workarounds. I tried everything and it brings my immune system down. People are gonna disprove this. For context, the stomach issue he mentions here is Crohn's disease, an inflammatory bowel disease with a long list of side effects that he's had for his whole life. Given that his health issues had long since been established. Okay, 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 okay. I, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I thought he was just doing another, another fake thing to where he's just like coming up with some bullshit. For a while, there was no reason to think he was lying. However, he followed this oh. up by claiming his doctor told him he was going to die in three days. But, um, <clears throat> we only have 35k in here right now, um, so I just want to say that I do have approximately three and a half days to live. But for people who knew Neon and had seen what he was capable of- Bro! Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. I'm getting baited. I'm getting baited. I'm getting baited by this guy, bro. I keep backpedaling, taking back what I'm saying, just for the opposite to be what I said.
capable of. Lying about being about to die was very oh mild my in comparison God. to his shenanigans. After he was supposed to pass away, he announced he was getting ready for surgery. And after this I'm supposed done surgery trying to was successful, the Neon resumed his content, with his death hoax not amounting to half of what the original did. Another content creator from Kick, who ended up having to rub elbows with Neon, was the infamous prankster Vitaly. During a live stream oh fan meetup on the 14th of January, Vitaly approached Neon asking for an autograph. However, doesn't doesn't this guy do the fake pred catches? Doesn't he do the fake pred catches? When he gets in front of Neon, he quickly opens a folder showing images taken from his girlfriend's OnlyFans account. Oh, what did he Look how nervous he is. Now there's a lot of minor details to note here. First, Sam asked Vitaly if he had a problem, and him responding two plus two equals four, which is funny. Then Neon says that Vitaly is nervous while stuttering and being out of breath, trying to find insults to throw at him. And then Vitaly is very deadpan and calm, is also a great contrast. Honestly, this proves to me that this new generation of obnoxious pranksters has nothing on the OGs. The cherry on top was a few moments later when Sam spit Bro. in Vitaly's face, which he responded to by licking it up and then saying, we kissed now. Vitaly proceeds to call the police on Sam as spitting on someone technically falls under the definition assault. of assault. Soon after, their car gets pulled over and Sam gets questioned by the cops. As the officer spoke to her, he clarified that what she did was battery and that he was going to have to arrest her. She spit on someone, which is a battery. But before that could happen, Vitaly came back and intervened, offering a bit of a deal for her to not get arrested. I, I need you to say, I'm sorry, King Vitaly. I'm sorry, King Vitaly. Thank I'm you. so sorry, sir. A day later, Vitaly ultimately decided to press charges anyway, but it's unknown what the <laughs> ultimate consequences were. A few days later, Vitaly was set to fight in an exhibition boxing match against TikToker Bryce Hall, and Neon decided to take part in the lead-up, presumably to produce scammed. more content in which the two went at it, seeing how much attention they got last time. As much as this was very much planned out and calculated, it does seem like there is some genuine friction between them, but Vitaly is weird enough of a guy that he's willing to collab with people even True. if he seriously hates them because it gets views. At one point, Vitaly intentionally spills water on Neon, prompting Neon to douse him back, at which point this escalates into Vitaly destroying Neon's phone. Eventually, Vitaly decides to leave, prompting Neon, who had a group of a dozen people with him, including bodyguards, to say Vitaly was scared and running away. Basically, Neon ambushed him to try and make him look like a coward, which didn't work, as pretty much everyone in the comments pointed out that Neon will only talk people when he's on stream. When he's one on Yeah, he yeah, yeah. It's like Jack. Him. But because he had this he's literally Jack, people bro. with him, he was a lot more aggressive because he thought they would back him up. Up until this point, Neon had already done so many annoying or ridiculous things, but this is one of the few times where he did something genuinely pathetic, and it wasn't in character or for the sake of entertainment, it was just him being himself. Another moment that completely destroyed whatever little reputation. Bro, I hate I hate when people sit here and like do this, bro. Like sitting here barking over the security guard's shoulder while they're like they they physically can't do anything, right? Oh my god had was his interaction with a 14 year old streamer named Kizzy. During one of Neon's streams, Kizzy called in to troll Neon and hurl insults at him. Instead of just removing him from the call, Neon proceeds to threaten him with doxing and even worse. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Kizzy, bro. My name's Kizzy. It says your, it in my what's your name. name? Bro. All I need no, is your no, name. No, I don't care. You know, I'm an internet warrior. What's your name? What's your, what's your first name? If you didn't catch that, that was Neon saying he doesn't care that Kizzy is a kid and threatening to do some really awful stuff. Really not the kind of thing you but say it's to just a, it, even if you're joking it's just Neon, they are though. viciously trolling you. This ultimately resulted in Neon being banned from Kick, and of course, he had no choice but to respond. While he does kind of apologize for the situation and acknowledges he shouldn't he's have said only, like, He's only sorry that he got caught, bro. He's only sorry he got caught or it caused him an issue. That's what it is. He's not sorry that he said it. He's only sorry because he got banned, bro. He said he almost refused Everyone knows to this. take accountability. And rather than doing some much needed reflection, Neon uses his tried and true excuse of blacking out. But um, that was by far one of my worst things I've ever said or done. And I want to sincerely apologize for what I said. That was not something that comes out of a person like me's mouth ever. Okay, I bro. Um, I let a a kid get in my head and when he talked crazy to me i just i blacked out and i didn't realize what i was doing and i wanted to so that's really not, apologize that's not as the how... comment section showed no one was convinced by this apology yeah. because yeah. at this point he'd done so many things that were completely dishonest that people just didn't trust him oh he's the boy who cried wolf he's the boy who cried wolf man
how do people sit here and and, and allow him or, or like sit here and want to be around him bro he's the boy who cried wolf he does it once he'll do it again just wait how much he put on a sad face to convince them that this time it was real. His next controversy took place in Dubai, when he and his girlfriend were approached by the police and told they were filming somewhere they weren't allowed to. The police escorted them from the area, and the person behind the camera ended the stream. Given how serious the law can be in these parts of the world, a lot of people were unsure of what happened, with some speculating that he died in a flood that <sighs> happened right around the same time. But Neon was alive That's and what he wants. having spent a total of 37 hours in jail, which he described as a pretty comfy experience. The down there knew me, bro. They knew me, chat. I was literally welcomed. I was a king in there, bro. I was a king. They were giving me free, like, free beds and it was fire, bro. It was fire. It honestly made me look at things different. I swear to God, I was ready to I was ready to just chill there with the boys, bro. But this wasn't going to be his only brush up with the law. As soon after, he streamed himself going on a joy ride with fellow content creators yep, yep, yep. Friends, who was driving extremely dangerously. Illegally. In between cars and speeding. Neon appeared to be in a lot of distress, pleading people streaming illegal activity bro like who who would have guessed it's a terrible idea like wow they, they really are trying to make everyone like everyone's job easier aren't they like the police they're just making it so easy like who who would have thought this was a terrible idea being with squeeze to slow down and then they wreck but I'm pretty sure it was fake, it was for views, well, right? was able to dodge traffic for a majority of the stream, he brakes too quickly, and his Lamborghini was rear-ended. Rather than pulling over and calling the police to report the accident, Squeeze decided to flee the scene, effectively committing a hit and run, getting Neon's kick channel temporarily suspended in the process. Due to the immense backlash, Squeeze took to his Instagram story to deny all responsibility for the incident. He notably refused to call it a hit and run, and blamed the other driver for crashing into him. Despite driving recklessly and stopping short- No, it doesn't high, matter, it's still a hit and run. asking for him to slow down, it's pretty clear that he was a part of the bit and that they'd agreed to doing this in the first place. So despite it not technically being Neon's fault directly since he wasn't responsible for the accident, he's definitely guilty to some degree for what happened. They're was it was it not fake though? Was it not like for the bit that that he like ran and whatnot? I, I'm confused. I, I read somewhere that it was like Why did people watch Neon? Uh, bro, like it's the same reason like why people watch Jack Doherty, right? Like they they want they want to see other people, like I don't want to say fail because they're not failing, right? At the end of the day, they're they're getting their bag. Let them get how they want it. You know, is what it is. But whenever they start causing problems for other people, I think that's where I I like have an issue with it. But um, people watch them because it, it's like I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how I would describe it. it. It's they want to see them have like problems. They want the streamer to have problems and they want to see the controversy before they see it on clips. They want to see it live. They want to see people, uh, like, jump him and, and, and what Like, they wish bad on him, but they stick around and watch, right? It, I, don't, I don't know a better way to describe it. They, they wish bad, they wish ill on them. They're just lucky it was a rear end and not a full And they want to watch it Things unfold. Things like this are what makes people see these streamers as terrible influences on kids. Yeah, they so are terrible influences. This is literally influences. just them making content out of driving recklessly and putting themselves and others in danger. But if there's one other streamer that's somehow more hated than Neon, it's Jack Doherty. Neon called out Jack for his supposedly shady business practices involving his OnlyFans talent agency. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you do. You get 17-year-old girls the night before their birthday, you got you buy a ten thousand dollar yacht every time. You get them drunk and they sign a contract. Fifty percent of their life every single time. Jack eventually released a video addressing Neon's claims and denying it. I I hate that I even have to explain myself on it, but I'm younger than basically every girl I have signed except for like one, and that girl signed four months after her 18th birthday. So I have proof to back everything up if I need to. Once again, as soon as the heat actually went up, between I mean, bro, scouting. He's scouting.
He's like, he's, he's like pre-ordering and then, and then on release, he's snatching, bro. Like, oh my God. Four months, four months after they turn 18, bro. <laughs> Yo, bro. Oh, man. Between Jack, him and someone Jack, else, Jack. Leon apologized and said that he had blacked out. They actually struck up a temporary truce for a few months, but in June, at a bare knuckle boxing event, it all came crashing down. Jack had one of his friends Crash pour out. alcohol on Neon in an effort to troll him, prompting a confrontation and fight. World champion, that has to feel really good right now. I've, uh, I've screwed up a lot of things in my life. I've failed a lot. Yeah, he's what do you get out of that, bro? I didn't. What do you get out of that? And like, and like, it poses problems. Look, look. It poses problems for other people, dude. Like, bro, it can can they not just do this shit to themselves, man? Do it to themselves. But like, when you get other people involved, it, it, it just that's the problem. It's a problem. Now they're like, they're going to probably end up, I have not seen this clip, they're probably going to end up stopping the show and discussing what's going on in the crowd. And so the people that like paid for the experience get to, they're, they're like forced to sit here and watch these two goons over here yell at each other, bro. I gotta say, as pathetic as it is to see these two dweebs go at it, oh, at least this time bro. Neon actually handled himself instead of commandeering his bodyguards like their Pokemon to defend him. As a result of what happened, both of them were escorted out of the event, and this incident made Neon retract his apology and start reiterating claims he had made about Jack signing underage girls to his OF agency, saying he was going to take Jack down. We'll be taking that money and I will be exposing you for getting drunk underage girls on yachts and taking percentages of them. You will be going down, my brother. But it didn't end there. While leaving the arena, Jack found Neon and tried to sucker punch him. Damn, bro. Yo, it, it's a it's a battle of the bodyguards. It's a battle of the bodyguards. Wait, wait. That's kind of heat, bro. I think I can understand why people watch them now. It's a battle, battle of their Pokemon in real life. Security guards were able to intervene before this once again escalated into a fight, and Neon walked away relatively unharmed despite having his t-shirt ripped. It's also worth clarifying that this wasn't only an attempted sucker punch. Jack's friends had also come along to attack Neon simultaneously, meaning he was basically two or three on one. Even more impressive is that Jack's friend came closer to hitting Neon than Jack did, but Neon somehow <laughs> managed to dodge it with his impressive spidey sense. For the first time in his career ever, Neon was the more dignified party in a conflict, as he had actually so done nothing sorry, wrong this time, bro. and Jack was clearly the Howard and the aggressor. That, I think that was the first moment in my career where like the whole world was on my side when that happened, like the whole thing. Um, and like everyone was defending me saying like, like, you know, like all the shit, like just talking nice about me and like everyone just hates him. Like there's no one anyone hates more in this world than him. But of course, Neon's grace period went away almost as yep, quickly yep, as, yep, yep. as on July 3rd, he attended a press conference for the fight between Nate Diaz and George Masvidal. Like always, Neon couldn't just attend an event. He had to crash it and get attention, resulting yep. in this moment. Second question I have for you today, man, is um, when you do get knocked out, are you gonna retire? It I'm gonna kick you in your fucking leg. <laughs> After Nate's response, Neon visibly got scared, and as it turns out, for a good reason. After he was escorted back to his car, Nate's crew showed up and started running after him, prompting him to start sprinting away, screaming that he was sorry and crying. He eventually made it to a parking garage and the cop showed up, bringing the incident to an end before it even started. He's Yo, really why, why would you think, not... why would you think you had a pass to sit here and ask dumbass questions like that to, to like a professional fighter at that, like, oh, you, you think... Like even 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 his fans would have done something to you, bro. At the, at, at this point, even the fans would be on your ass. What makes you think you can get away, bro? only was an entire gang of adults running at him, but people who hang around MMA fighters also tend to train MMA, meaning if they did yes. catch up to him, he was going to suffer a lot more than he did from Fusi and Vitaly. A while after, he made a video apologizing to Nate and referring to the Yo, incident bro. as the scariest thing he had ever experienced in his life. That apology means jack shit to him, bro. He does, like, 
life. But at this point, Fousey resurges in Neon's life. As when Aiden Ross hosted Fousey's return, one of the main questions people asked him was about the current state of his friendship with Neon. Or maybe the lack of friendship, rather. Despite the history of issues between the two, Fousey clearly cared about him and wanted to serve as some kind of guide, however good of a guide Fousey Tube can be. When he found out Neon was dating an OnlyFans girl, he was greatly disappointed and immediately started planning to I mean, ambush I him and give him seven consecutive swirlies to purify his soul. But it took them a while to reconnect after Fousey's comeback. It was only in July of 2024 that they officially met up, with Fousey being uncharacteristically lucid and respectful towards Neon. But due to his very bipolar temperament, it didn't take long for Fousey to fall out with Neon again. Supposedly, Neon owed him money from one of their projects, which Fousey never received, leading him to confront Neon in real life at TwitchCon. And as soon as Neon saw oh, him from afar, my money. he immediately started apologizing and saying he had Fousey's money, clearly scared of what was going to happen here. But these were empty words since it was revealed Neon didn't even have access to the money he owed Fousey. For the rest of the event, the two continued to clash whenever they met, with Fousey at one point putting Neon in a headlock and taking his glasses, saying he But you know it's for the cameras because the security guards aren't getting in, in, in the middle of it, bro. He gets paid. Neon did manage to negotiate with Yusuf into letting him keep his glasses under the promise that the money would be paid within the hour. And after a few more back and forths, Neon finally paid him back. There were a few more bouts of online beefs between them with diss tracks and the whole nine yards, but due to how obviously artificial and kind of uninteresting they can get, it's not really worth getting into their details. About a month okay, prior thank to this you. conflict with Fousey at TwitchCon, Neon broke the record as being the online personality who had faked his death the most times. That's right, he announced his impending doom that? for the third time. I'm dying. Oh I'm my god! I don't know what's gonna happen, but... I just hope you guys will pray for me and be there for me. At this point, his oh! audience's trust in him was at such an all-time low that if a video came out of Neon's dead body in a casket, there would be a line <laughs> forming at the funeral to poke him with a stick to check if he was really dead. However, he made a TikTok to clarify the matter, saying that the video that surfaced of him claiming he was going to die was a clip of his stream being taken out of context, and that he'd never joke about saying that kind of thing, because that was the old him. I was on stream, I was trolling, like I always do, just on stream, messing around, and all these people started reposting clips. Did he not? This weird stuff. Did he, is he not the one that uploaded it? To... To, everyone's texting me. Leave me alone. I'm perfectly fine. I'm not dying, right? Still, even with the context he provided, <laughs> he's clearly spoofing his previous death hoaxes, <laughs> meaning he's still kind of making light of it. Although he tried to spin it as if he was upset people were taking him out of context. Seeing that his rage baiting oh, stick had gotten God. old and was becoming increasingly expensive to keep up with, he decided to look for other ways to grow his popularity. One of them being a month long streaming subathon. Subathons are basically when a streamer sets up his stream so that subscriptions will make the stream go on for longer, yeah, yeah, usually yeah. with a limit of a week or a month. However, Neon Subathon failed miserably as just five days into the event, his production crew decided to pack up their things and quit. Wait, why? Yeah, I really need to run this. Yeah, no with me. It's too hot. Call you then. I don't, I don't give a What am I gonna sit here and beg with a you. I don't care. Fuck you. Fuck you. It's unknown what exactly made them cut ties. Yeah. Some speculated that they left over a comment Neon too many bro if you're gonna sit here and, and cause problems and whatnot bro don't do it to the people that you pay because yo they can and will just walk out and leave your whole plans crumbling down bro you you have something it, it, see the thing is is they are getting paid but you need them way more than they need you, okay? So there's a there's a bit of a huge problem here, okay? Yeah, how? How do you do this, man? made about there being too many Spanish people in the house, but it seems like the crew was already considering leaving by the time he said that, meaning it was probably an overall dissatisfaction with his antics. He knew he needed to do something to get attention, and right when his popularity was about to take a nosedive, oh in the God. early morning of a cold himself? October day, his home was raided by the police. Everyone in the house was temporarily detained, and once they were released, it was revealed that Neon had his license to film in Los Angeles revoked in the middle of a subathon. This then escalated into him getting kicked out of the- Yo, wait, how- how do you- how does this happen? How do you get your license to film taken away in Cali? Wait. Bro can't film anywhere besides his own residence, right? How do you, how much of a piece of shit do you have to be to get your whole filming license revoked?
the house he was living in by the person who actually owned it. He moved into a different home, this time in Wait, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Detained. And once they were released, it was revealed that Neon had his license to film in Los Angeles revoked in the middle of his subathon. This then escalated into him getting kicked out of the house he was living in by the <laughs> person who actually owned it. He moved into a different home, this time in Las Vegas, but within a couple weeks, he ended up suffering a punishment for something he actually hadn't even done. Two streamers, Izzy, Prime, and Sweater God, had a fight in their stream, followed by Prime getting heavily intoxicated and going through a casino trying to fight random people. This had nothing to do with Neon, but for whatever reason, this public meltdown caused him to get banned on kick alongside with Prime. Now, this was a mistake, so his account quickly got unbanned. But in well, the opinion wait. of most people following the developments of Neon's story, the real mistake was letting him be on kick in the first place. Regardless of how bad the consequences are that he suffers from time to time for disrespecting others for cloud, it seems he never puts in any effort to stay out of trouble. His career runs on controversy. It, but yeah, it runs on is, it. Even if you get some short-term views and cloud off of that, you have to keep one up on yourself. Bro, see, the thing is, is that's not, that's not how you build a... It's not how you build a loyal fan base, right? Like, you. All the while, none of your audience actually likes you. They're just rooting for your downfall. And while he's making money doing it right they now, wish it will last forever. Eventually, the only people who are left will be the people rooting for his failure in the first place. Neon has no real fans and is starting to show. I've been Turkey Tom. Thanks for watching. And until Yo. next time, leave me alone. Yo, W video, man. You really, you really did uh, showcase Neon in a way that like, no one, no one could have expected. I, I'm trolling. Everyone expected this outcome, but you did it. You did it an amazing, an amazing job at portraying his character, dude. Yo, W video, man. W video. Much love, man. Much love. Uh.